Jill had a panic attack because I lost a friend. Started shooting and shooting and getting closer and closer and closer. As the music was going and then all of a sudden it stopped. All you could hear were sprays of bullets just over and over again. He laughed when he was shooting. We had bodies piled up on top of each other. I've never seen anything like this in my career. This killer was radicalized, and at least in some part through the internet. The Orlando terrorist may be dead, but the virus that poisoned his mind remains very much alive. A radical Islamic terrorist targeted gay and lesbian citizens because of their sexual orientation. It's a strike at the heart and soul of who we are as a nation. Days after the largest mass shooting in American history, President Obama called attention to Donald Trump's views. The president also refuses to call the attack Islamic terrorism. This is Risk and Reward. I'm Deirdre Bolton. You are looking right now at a shot outside the terrorist's father's home. So he's expected to host a kind of press conference. It could start at any moment. So we are monitoring that for you. We will bring you back there. Uh, if anything significant comes out of that conversation. Earlier today, President Obama made numerous comments on the Orlando attack. He said terminology is a political distraction. There's no magic to the phrase radical Islam. It's a political talking point. It's not a strategy. And the reason I am careful about how I describe this threat has nothing to do with political correctness and everything to do with actually defeating extremism. American Islamic Forum for Democracy President, Dr. Zudi Jasser, with me now. Dr. Jasser, always great to speak with you. Do you consider terminology to be, as the president said, quote, a political distraction? You know, setting aside uh, President Obama's patronizing uh, a reference to our, our importance of the terminology. The reason it's important is it would change his policies, and he wants to adhere to the policy, Deirdre, that it is countering violent extremism. Notice, he thinks we're idiots and that we're not going to pay attention to his identification of violent extremism, because once you name it Islamism or political theocratic Islam, then follows a shift in what Homeland Security would pay attention to. Then it would become relevant if you call it countering violent Islamism versus extremism, then all of a sudden we can hold Homeland Security accountable to the father's ideas of supporting the Taliban, to the imam's ideas of homophobia, nonviolent homophobia, nonviolent anti-Semitism, nonviolent anti-American uh, uh, conspiracies. These get into play when you call the terminology what and use the terminology of political Islam. So, he wants to avoid it and enact blasphemy laws in America. So, well, I want to come back to that because that's a very strong statement. But I almost want to say, if we give the president the benefit of the doubt, is his idea, do you think, that he doesn't want to alienate the 99% of Muslims who live in this country who are not violent? Is that the strategy or am I missing something? Well, the people he doesn't want to alienate, unfortunately, is that segment of Muslims that believe that Islam should be part of government, the Islamist movement. Us reformers that want to love our faith with a tough love, he is alienating by not having us have a seat at the table, by avoiding that terminology that would then give us a seat. Why do they have an imam standing next to the FBI when this comes out two hours after the event if Islam has nothing to do with it? What does, if reform has nothing to do with it, then he shouldn't even have him there. It's amazing. Uh, uh, Secretary Clinton said the same thing, where on the one hand, she says there's a virus that's infecting them, and on the other hand, they're calling them lone wolves, and she said the terminology doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, if the terminology doesn't matter, what's that virus? And if they're not lone wolves, what's the virus? The so, virus Dr. Zasser, is I want to ask you, because I hear what ideology. you're saying. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of cloudiness, and you're saying, just be honest. Let's just call it as we see it, and then we can move forward. So if you were speaking with the president, what would you tell him right now? I would say that if you don't want to treat Muslims with the low expectations of, of, of a bigotry of low expectations, be real with us, acknowledge that 
there's parts of the faith, strains of the faith that are compatible with America, that we love our country, but that we need to take sides within the house of Islam, that you can't just lump all of Islam either as all good or all bad, that if we are going to defeat these ideas, they don't just get radicalized on the internet, they get radicalized, there's precursors. It's not just the violence, it's the precursors, and if we're going to address the precursors, give us some tough love, and engage the reformers. None of the reformists, Deirdre, in our Muslim reform movement have any seats at the table at the White House, at the State Department, or at the Department of Defense. None of them. They are ignoring it. And as long as they call it countering violent extremism, we won't have a seat because it's all about somehow, like the movie Minority Report, the government's supposed to know when they're going to stick a gun in their hand and then they become lethal. I love that expression, the bigotry of low expectations. You said that there is a slow process. There are many forms of becoming extremist or becoming radicalized. Uh, it now seems as if the Orlando terrorist's wife may have been involved and didn't alert authorities. Do you see connections that we should take away from, that law enforcement should take away from, between the San Bernardino murders and the Orlando murders? The connections are the uh, community conspiracy that happens, especially with some of the families. It is very unusual for the spouses not to know that something is awry. It is very unusual for them not to have at least some years of indoctrination. And for example, the San Bernardino shooters were indoctrinated in this Salafi jihadi uh, mentality from a Pakistani school called the Huda School, which should have been on the radar of Homeland Security. But since they're only addressing violence, they couldn't put that on the radar. And many of us can tell you that the Salafi jihadis in this country that believe that the world's divided into the land of Islam and the land of war, they may not be preaching terrorism, but they certainly are not American patriots, and they are certainly part of an insurgency mentality or separatist mentality that should be on the radar of every one of our Homeland Security agents. Dr. Zuni Jasser, thank you so much. Clarity is most welcome at this time. The American Islamic Forum for Democracy, he is the president there.